Okay, so here's our setup right here today. First thing we have is the gum arabic over here. We have a couple of craft sticks, a mixing brush, our little six part mixing pan, some distilled water, and here we have our dry pigment. In this case, it's ultramarine blue. I have it in a canister here with a tape around it. The uh, dry pigment wants to leak out of it, so when you're taking the cap off, you have to take away the tape. Once I take away the tape, I simply put it on the edge of the table to hold on to it. And I have a piece of paper toweling down here. Despite your best efforts, there's always going to be a few little particles that drop off either the cap or the jar. So, have a piece of paper toweling down, it'll catch it and you'll be able to get rid of anything that way. Now, when you look at this, it's spectacular. This is the ultramarine blue. What we're going to do here is, we're going to take a craft stick and we're going to take what's equivalent to about an eighth of a teaspoon and put it in one of the mixing pan indentations and another. This will be enough to paint in all your color charts from one of them and then this amount over here will be plenty for you to practice with all seven or eight of you together and you'll still have some left over. So this amount will cover everything. Um, what you then do is simply this. Set aside the uh, craft stick on the paper towel and now cap this tightly. You're now done with the dry pigment. As you can see, with these tiny precautions now, you're not exposing yourself to any kind of dangers. What I'm going to do is take my piece of tape that I had set aside and tape the canister once again. You can see right here that on the canister there's the name of the color and there's the five digit identifying number that is in the Krimer catalog. And so when you go online you'll see that five digit number. So I'm going to retape this. I'll put it into the box that I'm sending to you and then I'll show you what happens next. Next, we simply take another craft stick and our gum arabic. And we visually look at how much is there. I'm going to zoom in here and let's see what we can see as we zoom in. I'll scoot this over so it's the center of attention. And we've got it right there. And what I'm going to do is actually just zoom in on one. And hopefully we've got it there. Is that too much? It can't focus because it's too close. Okay, there it is there. So we can see it. And what we're going to do is, whatever amount of dry pigment we have there, we're going to try to add an equal amount of our binder, our gum arabic. We always, always, always do pigment and binder first, together. We don't even acknowledge that there's such a thing as water yet. So right now, the pigment and the binder. So I'm going to take my craft stick and I'm just going to add droplets of the gum arabic right there. And when I think that I have just about equal amounts, I'm going to use my craft stick to say, okay, let's stir it. These pigments that I've chosen for you do not need grinding. They melt like butter as soon as you stir them. Binder, gum arabic, and the dry pigment. There's no grittiness and no granularity to them. That's the standard you want to judge if something needs any further grinding. And there's no grittiness, there's no granularity to any of this. And as you can see, within a few seconds, they're all stirred together and they're ready now for thinning out. The consistency you want for all of the pigments and binders is that of Elmer's glue. You want this about the consistency of Elmer's glue. When you ladle it up like that and rake it off the side of the indentation, it's about the consistency of Elmer's glue. So, we did that for one of our indentations. Let's do it for the other one. 
I happen to have another craft stick here, so I'm just going to put the binder in there until I feel like there are equal amounts of binder and pigment, and I'll stir it. A lot of times you'll have some of the dry pigment jumping out of the indentation and onto the background. Right now I just have a large piece of white paper, but you really should have this uh, mixing pan backed with a couple paper towels. That way, once you're done, you can simply get rid of the paper towel and any of the loose pigment that's in the environment. So once again, this stirs together and just melts together like butter. No grittiness, no granularity, and we have the consistency, roughly, of Elmer's glue. So, now we're finally ready to say, okay, we can mix some water in here. Whenever I have people mixing these in class, I'll have them mix one indentation that will flow through a metal nib. That is something like thin cream or maybe a little thinner than that. And you know, you've seen, you've used gouache, you've used the stickings, you know what will flow through a metal nib. So you're going to mix one of these and we'll consider this the thinner consistency so that it, mix, that it flows readily through a metal nib. Then we'll mix the other one with just a couple drops of water in it. This will be our backup. Our first one that's a thinner one, this is what we'll use to paint our color chart and then begin doing our lettering and it would be passed around the class and everybody would use it. And then only if it were used up would we thin this one out and use it or in the case where someone accidentally, as it was passed around the classroom, accidentally thin this out too much then we'd have our backup one here that's thicker that we could add and make it correct. So regardless, you're going to have plenty to paint in your color chart and everyone do their lettering and still have some left over. So once again, this will be our thinner consistency. That is, it would be nice to flow through the metal nib. And this one over here would only have maybe two, three, four drops of water and quite thick, but then it's our backup to further thin out if we need to and uh, then still have some left over. So, let's see how we add the water. I'm going to get rid of the craft sticks now because when we add the water we want to use our mixing brush. That'll give us a good read. So, let's look at this one, what we're going to use as our writing fluid. We're going to simply take a little dropper and put in a drop or two of water. Definitely not enough and what we always want to do with our, our water here and our brush. We'll have at least a couple or three indentations of distilled water. And we'll always put our brush into the water first so that we have it saturated with water first. And then we'll stir our fluid. And this is actually thinner than I thought it would be. So right now, it's perfect for lettering with a metal nib. I accidentally did it right. Terrible, terrible illustration. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to stir this over here to see what kind of consistency it is. And I'm just going to add a drop or two of water in it. And I'm going to leave it. A lot of times what I'll do after I finish mixing this and get rid of the piece of paper that's in the background I will then put another piece of paper in the background and I'll label this like this. On the piece of paper, I'll make a little illustration like this and this will be thick, this will be thin, water, and water. And you'd think, well, why should I label that water? Well, once you begin cleaning out your brush and it gets darker, sometimes you forget which is which. So it's nice, especially when you have a group of people, to uh, have everything labeled. And this would be the piece of paper that I would put in behind this after I had thrown out the piece of paper that I'd been doing the mixing on. So, right now, you're all set. You're ready to go. 
That was the great mystery of how to mix dry pigments. Have fun. Bye-bye.